You are listening to The Tatiana Show. This show may contain adult content, language, and humor and is intended for mature audiences. If that's not you, please stop listening. Nothing you hear on The Tatiana Show is intended as financial advice, legal advice, or really anything other than entertainment. Take everything you hear with a grain of salt. Oh, and if you're listening to us on an affiliate network, the ideas and views expressed on this show are not necessarily those of the network that you're listening on or of any sponsors or any affiliate products you may hear about on this show. Now that that's squared away, let's start the show. Hey there, it's time for the show, the Tatiana Show, where you make friends and talk life and crypto. What's the point of all this technology without a little love in our lives? Our hosts, Tatiana Moroz, Dr. Stephanie Murphy, and Lauren Kasovitz have come together to bring you Proof of Love. Go to proofoflovecast.com. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Tatiana Show. And we've also got Josh Hagala. Hey, Josh, how's it hey. going? Hey, 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 Tatiana, it's good to be back. Okay, well, I'm happy to hear that you're back. You're uh, an integral part of this show, so I missed you, my friend. But you've been doing a few different shows with me now, so it's not like you've been completely gone. Uh, today, we have an awesome episode coming up with a couple friends of mine that have taken over the world of music and liberty, especially in terms of syncing it with film and stuff. So that's going to be really cool. But before we get to that, I wanted to make sure that we thanked our sponsor because uh, they're a new sponsor for us. And it's a podcast called The Local Maximum. So I'm excited to tell you, if you are a crypto enthusiast and you want to improve your arsenal of understanding and intuition, check out this podcast, The Local Maximum. Listeners will improve their insight into areas like probability, the fundamentals of AI and blockchain. I don't know anything about AI, but maybe I should listen in. That would be cool. Uh, the Local Maximum covers emerging technology through the perspective of machine learning engineer Max Sklar. Through guests and discussions, that knowledge is applied to important issues of our day, such as fake news, bias in tech companies, and internet censorship. Tune into The Local Maximum whenever, wherever you listen to your podcast, or go to localmaxradio.com. Check it out there. So The Local Maximum Podcast, thanks so much for sponsoring the show. And uh, yeah, I don't know. What's going on with you, Josh? How's it going over at uh, Voltero? Oh, it's going well. Yeah, we're just uh, developing away, developing like crazy with uh, a lot of people actually buying gold at the moment. So I'm, I'm wondering if the crypto price is actually going to go down. I find when the volume goes up uh, in gold, then the, somehow the crowd seems to know. But, um, but at the same time, there's people selling the gold for the crypto. So, uh, so who knows? <laughs> who knows? It's a wild ride, right? Why would somebody want to have both gold and crypto on the same account? Well, it's about hedging, right? So why would you want to go into fiat? Because you think the crypto is going to go down. Uh, and why would you want to buy uh, crypto again? Because you think it's going to go up. Okay. And, uh, yeah, so it's, it's as easy as that. But instead of fiat, you know, gold is, is fully insured. Not like fiat, which is not insured at all. And belongs to the exchange and so if the exchange goes broke then it's stuck like you're goxed you don't want to get goxed no nobody wants that um no. cool all righty well anything else we should talk about before we bring on our guests ryan and scott yeah well, i'm just wondering actually about your podcast proof of love how's that going well this is the my podcast theoretically but um well, you know, you've got so many great projects going to be honest. i do have i do have some fun stuff going on um so yeah you proof really of love is Proof of Love is really fun. We have this um, tantric episode that we're putting out. So I feel like that's oh. kind of spicy and a little bit uncomfortable because of that reason. But it's really, really good listening. And um, then on the other hand, we have, you know, something that we did with Carrie Wedler. We did something with uh, Julia Taransky. We just did something about nonviolent communication with Pamela Morgan. That was really, really good. I mean, it's a pretty personal show. So... I don't know. Yeah. Hopefully um, my sacrifice will bring other people the ability to maybe be more in touch with themselves. I don't know. We'll see. I'm really enjoying it. It's a proof of love cast, right? Mm -hmm. yep, yeah, you got it. Love. All right. Well, listen, why don't we get this show on the road? We got um, Ryan and Scott here. I was going to read their bio, but I feel like that sounds kind of stiff. Um, 
so do you guys want to say hi and um, give us a little background or the audience a little background on you? Hey. Hi. Yeah. Hey, well, guys. Uh, thanks, for, thanks for having us on here. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, we, uh, let's see. Well, we, we've, uh, this is Ryan, by the way, and, and Scott's here, and we're, we uh, are Music for Liberty. We've been working in the space together, you know, probably we're thinking about four years. We are composers, mostly writing uh, scores for films, documentaries, and, and uh, other video content, uh, mostly with a sort of liberty theme to them. It's really been a passion for both of us. We both believe that the future of the liberty movement depends on good media and that people's hearts and minds aren't gonna be changed by the next white paper. Um, they're gonna be changed by the next movie. And our really strong belief is that music plays such a key role in the effectiveness of media. So sure. it's really, a, it's a mission for us to be a part of, of this growing movement of libertarian media and and really change the change the world a little bit at a time you know each project at a time yeah the you know the music piece of the storytelling really elevates the emotions and that can really um you know we really feel that's an important piece so that's uh been been our mission what are some of the highlight pieces that you guys have worked on so far well, probably our most uh, well-known film is uh, Little Pink House that stars Catherine Keener and Gene Triplehorn. That came out uh, last year, was in theaters for a while, and now is on Amazon and iTunes and other streaming platforms. And that's about the uh, Kilo versus New London Supreme Court case. We also did a, a documentary with the same production team, Ted and Courtney Balaker, um, called Can We Take a Joke, uh, which is about the clash between politically correct culture and comedy, both on college campuses and in, in the larger society. What did you find in that? What was the what was the outcome? I mean, what kind of comics did you guys figure out? Are we doomed? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, it's uh, the the fight continues. I guess it's uh, you know when we worked on that project that came out. You know, that was a few years ago now, and it. it was really kind of picking up steam the whole free speech and and all that especially the college campuses and um and actually it's it's kind of continued to pick up steam so uh, you know there's still more work to be done but the, you know those working on those kind of documentaries and getting that kind of messaging out there uh you know it helps with with the fight for freedom so you know one thing i found over the last well since the 60s i guess is that artists have been pushed to the wayside in terms of uh, there's been this sort of commentary of, oh, just shut up and play music. Like, mm. like artists shouldn't have a say. And I think that's just so ridiculous because at the end of the day, artists are the ones that bring more interesting and radical ideas or push against doctrines. And, and I've always thought it, it's stupid that someone like an actress or an actor can't get up and say, hey, you know, this, no matter what you feel about it, if someone gets up and goes, blah, 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 global warming, I don't care if I'm for or against it. I think it's ridiculous to tell them to shut up. It's great that they have a platform and they talk about it. It's good. Except when they're oh, yeah. indoctrinated, because I mean, let's be real, most of Hollywood is really hard left. And that kind of policy and that kind of thought is very, very potentially dangerous. I mean, life-threatening if adopted by enough people. Don't you think? Well, I think, uh, I mean, that's where personal responsibility and in, in what you're, you know, taking in comes into play too, as far as how you're interpreting what, what different people are saying. Uh, but that's, that's kind of where our role, as far as uh, being involved with the music on, uh, you know, different projects that are kind of a counter to the left-leaning Hollywood uh, storytelling is, you know, and that's where we, we like, you know, try to play a role in that. The storytelling really is, is uh, probably the most powerful piece. I mean, as a celebrity saying they feel this way or that is one thing, but it's really the films that come out and where, where themes are kind of embedded within the storytelling. Um, I think that's a bigger concern. And I think that's where we're trying to counter that with, with working on films like Little Pink House and and we, we actually have seen that with, with Little Pink House. There was a story about a uh, 
screening of the film that was going to be taking place, I think in Rhode Island, maybe. Um, and there was a bike shop owner there whose shop was threatened by eminent domain. And he contacted the Institute for Justice, which was uh, very involved in the film, and said, look, I'm facing this problem. Can you help? And they really marketed the film in that area and got a lot of people to come to the screening. And the vote about whether or not eminent domain was going to be used took place like two weeks later. And it, they ended up judging, the, the vote ended up coming out that, that they, he, he would, his place wouldn't be taken through eminent domain. And he, he said, I'm certain that it was because of this film that it changed enough people's minds that, that they voted against it. So oh, that, wow. That's really exciting to, to, to see in that very specific way that the film is making that kind of difference. And for those that don't know what imminent domain is, uh, yeah, what is it? Basically, the government's right to take your property for whatever purpose they see fit. I mean, traditionally, it's been used mostly for public purposes, quote, public purposes, schools, mm -hmm. hospitals, roads, that kind of thing. But Little Pink House is, is about uh, Pfizer uh, was, was courted to relocate their headquarters um, and because they wanted a fair bit of land in order to do that, they attempted to use eminent domain to, to take, uh, it was, I think, about 100 homes. Um, and of course, they offered them, quote, fair market value for it. But, but the point that's made in the film is that you can't place a market value on it. It's, it's, it's people's property. It's why they chose to live where they chose to live. Yeah, and it, it really goes against private property in general. I mean, things like housing or land tax do as well, really. Like, you know, a lot of people say, you've got to buy a place because then you own something. And you think, oh, do you though? Yeah, that's certainly true. Mm -hmm. So um, so where, where next uh, for you guys in terms of music and uh, inspiring liberty and others? Um, are you going to continue f focusing on film? Yeah, I mean, we, well, we've been, besides scoring, we've also been involved. We, we do music supervision, music editing. We kind of, all pieces of post-production having to do with music. Uh, but we've, uh, we've also worked um, with a few other organizations and we'll continue to work with them. Um, but but an, another main piece that we're, we've kind of been working on now is uh, we're calling it the Composing Freedom Initiative. And one, one thing we've come across is, uh, you know, a lot of the more liberty uh kind of media that's been coming out a lot of it is is just getting their legs so a lot of oftentimes the budgets are a little smaller and so we've been trying to find some kind of uh creative ways to bring um bring additional funding to different projects as far as uh their music budgets um so that we can we can do higher quality scores or bring you know higher quality music licensing and and various things like that so with the composing freedom initiative um you know, we've kind of been looking at some unique uh, situations. And in fact, uh, we've actually been talking, uh, we have a little bit uh, connection in the cryptocurrency world where we've talked to some, some places where we're you know, discussing things like having a, a, a company sponsor a score for a film and kind of as a, kind of alternative ways to, uh, for some promotion and marketing for them um, as being a part of uh, you know, a film essentially. And another piece of our, our Composing Freedom Initiative is uh, on education. We're, we're working hard to try to uh, educate as many filmmakers about the use of music in their projects as we can, and especially liberty-minded filmmakers, because we find that, that there's, people tend to think because they grew up in the world of music that, that they know how to use music in a film, and it's not always the case. So we're, we're trying to both educate uh, about the aesthetics, how to really make music effectively work in your media, and also the practicalities. How do you go about licensing music? How do you hire a composer? Uh, what's it like working with a composer? What's the vocabulary? Um, so that's, that's a part of our, our larger mission as well. Do you think that there's a way to make it um, interesting to teach people about economics or well cryptocurrency i think would be a little bit easier to keep it interesting but do you think that there are ways or projects that you've admired because i think that that is oftentimes the great divide um mm -hmm. 
what do you think has been successful in that regard? Because there's a lot of films, you know, um, <laughs> you know there's a lot of films that are anti-capitalism and mm -hmm. right right you know it'd be great to see something that was actually exciting and fun i mean remember america freedom to fascism that was super cool and exciting what else do you think is out there and is it is it easy obviously it must not be because a lot of people aren't doing it but have you guys ever thought about anything like that well i you know one area that i think we've seen a little bit of that and and it's it has hit uh kind of a broader audience would be you know, um, for example, Straight Outta Compton, the film that came out a couple of years ago. Um, I think, you know, stories like that kind of embed uh, the spirit of entrepreneurship and how it can, you know, how wealth can be generated and how you can you, you can move up the ladder, essentially. And I, and I feel that's a very, you know, there's sort of a capitalist thread in there or, or at least entrepreneurship. Um, and I think that... I mean... I mean, that's like a drug movie. Not that, I mean, if drugs are legal, it'd probably be a lot easier for people to use that as, as a thing, but that's how you go to jail. So I can't really get behind. Oh, right. Well, that. no, I mean, through the music more so with Straight Outta okay. Compton. Okay. No, yeah, yeah, I mean, it's true. There's a lot of inspiration in that movie, but just to be clear, mm -hmm. I think that- Sure, oh yeah, yeah. That's not like, it is a really viable option if you're in the ghetto and it seems to make a lot of sense, but I don't know. I don't think it's really worth it. Maybe I don't know what I'm, obviously oh. I don't know what I'm talking about, but I just don't think it's worth it. <laughs> no, no, I mean, that's the story of NWA, right? Yeah, yeah. So I, I think we're talking more that that they were able to bring themselves out of out of that through music more so. Uh, you know, I mean. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's uh, essentially what happened with Dr. Dre in particular, who who now is worth you know what I think half a billion dollars. Um, you know, and he grew up in Compton. So, I mean, that, that's sort of, I mean, that's one example, but I think as far as your question, you know, as far as economics and that, stories about uh, entrepreneurial success and, and how people can kind of bring themselves out of tough situations by, by having that entrepreneurial spirit mm -hmm. is maybe a counter to, to the more anti-capitalist kind of storytelling, I guess. Um, and, and hopefully there's more of those. I mean, that's just one example that came to mind, but. Sure, that sounds good. Tatiana, I, I really love the fact that you've always focused on liberty in your your art and uh, your singer songwriting and. Not always, but for a while now, it's definitely yeah. been a, a major part of my my craft, so to speak. Yeah, I mean, do you guys have any any uh, suggestions or advice for young artists up and coming that that feel frustrated with? You know, I guess their political views not being heard or, or whatever, and, and how to express that through music and get paid for it. Mm, right. <laughs> and that's always the challenge. Buy Bitcoin. This is not financial advice <laughs> of any kind, but, you know, if I had extra money, that's where I'd be putting it. I mean, I, I think the most important thing is to obviously write and create from from an authentic place um but i also think finding ways to do that that aren't um that don't come across as prop propaganda i think that that's the challenge in the liberty media space in general is finding that sweet spot where people can hear the message uh that you're not putting people off by being too overly philosophical um, you know, finding finding the heart in it that really appeals to to a broad number of people, and and then the message is also there as part of that heart. Um, seems to me like that's the challenge of any artist that's trying to create in a liberty space. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah. I would agree with that. I I, I think uh, uh, that's that's the tricky piece because it's kind of complicated right now, and there's a lot of uh, forces working against ideas of freedom and liberty sometimes, um, especially in, you know, with, uh, in the more creative spaces. Um, but uh, I, I guess finding a way to navigate that, I think, um, you know, yeah, like Scott said, I mean, basically trying to get, bring that message out, but not in an overt, you know, kind of in your face kind of way, I think uh, is more effective in the long run anyways. So being more poetic about it. Right, right. And I, I think also uh, universal, 
you know, trying to find the, the universal truths that are kind of behind why liberty matters to us. Yeah, that's a very good point. Like I find if I talk to even quite hard leftists, I can say things if before they know my opinion and anything, I can say things that are totally uh, run along my path of, of total liberty almost to an ANCAP state. Mm -hmm. um, I can say things to them like, do you own yourself? And, and they will always say yes. Yeah. So there's certain things you can say that resonate with pretty much everyone. Absolutely. I mean, it's my belief that most people in the world want the same things out of life and that the political divides come about because people misunderstand how, how we get there. You know, that the, the divides between left and right are often because they've been indoctrinated to believe that you can't have a peaceful society without, without the heavy hand of authority. Um, they believe that's necessary, but, but most people still want the same things, you know, family, uh, entertainment, a meaningful career, connection. So I, I think when you can talk to people on that level, you can find a way to, to move them towards something that's more right, hopefully. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, I'm glad to have you guys fighting on the team for, uh, for music for Liberty. I was going to say Liberty for music, but then I looked at the name and I was like, Oh, maybe <laughs> interchangeably. Uh, I think it's, it's uh, a really good uh, thing to tap into. Where can people find you guys online if they want to connect and maybe do some work together? Our website is uh, musicforliberty.com and our Facebook page also is music for Liberty. You can email us at contact at musicforliberty.com. Thanks so much, Scott. Thanks so much, Ryan, for coming on the show. Uh, everybody, thanks for tuning in. Please go to thetatianashow.com to listen to this episode, to listen to other episodes. Give us a like, follow us on some sort of social media stuff. We're all over the place. Um, and yeah, I guess that's it. Uh, check out proofoflovecast.com for a relationship crypto type show, which is a little different. And uh, anything else? Uh, check out Voltora.com. Very cool. Thanks, everyone. We'll see you next time. Bye. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thanks. Hey, there. It's time for the show. The Tatiana Show. Where you make friends and talk life and crypto. We gotta think and reflect and use lots of intellect with our hearts when we work together. I know that it can be so hard out there looking all around and saying that life ain't fair. So that is why we will fight and stay up late at night listening to the Tatiana Show. Thank you for listening to the Tatiana Show. Please follow us on Twitter at Queen Tatiana or on Facebook and Instagram at Tatiana Moreau's Music. More episodes can be found at thetatianashow.com and make sure you leave a review on iTunes and tell your friends. The Tatiana Show has been brought to you by CryptomediaHub.com, a boutique marketing and PR agency for Bitcoin and beyond.